Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I am jumping into the new Cetra Tower floors, and I will be running you guys through floors 91, 92, and 93. I'm going to give you a basic layout of what you need to go into these fights, the sigils you need to bring, the healing as soon as you need to equip, and everything essentially you need to know in order to go through these three floors. Now, in comparison to the other floors in the Cetra Tower, these are definitely not the hardest ones, um, but it is good to know what you're getting into when you are going to be attempting these floors. Now, that being said, let's jump over to the battle tower. I'm going to be going through them one at a time. As you guys can see, my maximum floor is 95 right now. I've just been really busy and I'm slowly putting these out as I go. Uh, hopefully either to give you guys some form of entertainment in your days or either to just help you guys get through these floors in general or if you just need a little bit of a heads up before you go into it yourself. Alright, so the first floor, floor 91, is going to consist of these three enemies. We've all seen them before. They have basically no immunities. They can't be broken, physical defense broken, or attack broken as well. They do inflict fog. All right, so we will be bringing a Fog on Barret going into this fight. Fog is essentially just going to raise the ATB cost of magic abilities. So not super uh, potent, especially if you're bringing a physical DPS like I am with Cloud today. Um, it does say that they will release a powerful AoE element attack. We're going to kill them before that essentially happens or kill most of them. And multi-target multi effects are multi-target attacks are effective against these enemies. However, I'll be using single-target damage to individually take them out. All right. So that being said, let's take a look at what we're getting into right here. So you are going to need X sigils right here. Um, if you are going for the sigil breaks, however, they are very, very hard to actually fully break all the sigils. I highly recommend just killing, trying to kill them if you can before this goes off. And if you can't kill them before it goes off, definitely try to kill at least one or two because it will greatly reduce the power of the attack that's coming once you uh, once you take them out. Because their combined power, kind of like the Black Waltz fight, when all three of them are up and they cast those AoE magic attacks, they're more powerful. You kill one, they get less powerful. You kill two, they become in their weakest state. So essentially, that's what we're going to be doing going into this. I'm going to run you guys through the basic strategy. All right, so this is going to be my team. I'm going to be running Cloud, primary fire DPS, Aerith, primary buffer slash healer, Barret, primary breaker slash off DPS, and Imperiler via fire breach. So for Cloud, we have the New Year's costume, Sky Splitter, Ifrit's Hellfire, Sky Splitter here at level 10. I have the Stream Saber here. Um, there's like some play that you can do with building these teams. You could put Glavinus here, etc., for the physical defense break as well. Um, for the materials, the only materials that are actually noteworthy, if you are going for the sigil breaks, are the actual sigils right here. So I have an X on Cloud, an X on Aerith, and an X on Barret right there. All right. Other than that, they're just all stat sticks. Physical attack stat sticks for Cloud, healing stat sticks for Aerith, Aerith and magic attack stat sticks for Barret right here. Other than the fact that Barret is running a fire breach because we are at a lack of an imperiler and also he is running a fire of blow or actually a fire right here so that he can do some extra damage on the side, right? Other than that, we have the Commodore Dress for Aerith, Healing Wind, Limit Break, Commodore Wand, and the Fairy Tail Kiraga weapon right here. For Barret, we have the Crimson Flare Limit Break. We have his regular gear voucher costume. We also have the Electro Cannon here for the AoE Physical Magic Attack Break, and the Assault Gun, which is not necessary at all on this floor just because... They are all magic based, so let's switch that off really quick and maybe put on the physical defense breaking weapon. That is definitely going to do better. All right, so now we can really do some damage with Cloud. I'm going to show you guys the back end really quick right here. For stats, Cloud's hitting at 189k power, 12.4k HP, almost 6k physical attack, 125 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here for you guys to check out. But essentially, he is your full-blown fire DPS. Build him in th such a way. His sub-weapons are going to include the Radiant Edge at OB8, the Glavinous OB6, and the Ultimatic here at OB9. For Aerith, we have her sitting at 118k power, 12.8k HP, 
She's got around 2.6 and 2.3 physical and magic attack, 108 magic defense, and healing 3.5k. You can equip the Guild War Umbrella to greatly reduce magic defense. So why don't I go here? If you guys have it, I highly recommend building this weapon. You know, and even if you don't have it at this OB level, it's definitely going to be helpful for raising the magic defense of all three of your characters across the board for basically tanking the attacks of these enemies right here. So other than that, for Aerith, she's running the Centipede back end, Guard Stick, and the Umbrella. And then last but not least, we have Barrett Wallace here, 102k power, 11.3k HP. He's got 3.3k magic attack, 148 magic defense, and his R abilities are as shown here for you guys to check out. All right, and his sub weapons are going to be the Feather Scatter, HP, Physical Defense up. Since these are all magic, I don't know why I had physical defense weapons here. So let me switch these over. I'm going to switch to the Thousand Waves right here. All right, and then maybe the Umbrella for a little bit of extra magic damage. All right, there we go. So now his stats are looking a little better. His magic attack is superseding his physical attack. And that is going to be the team I am running going into this fight. It's not terribly hard. Um, but hopefully this guide will help you guys get through this fight, better understand it, and so that you can go in prepared. All right, so my strategy here is take out the middle one, lower the health of the side ones to 50%, then kill them with uh, summons. All right, so at the beginning here, in a spiritual harmony, Barret is going to fire breach. All right, there goes the fog. But luckily, the fo fog doesn't affect his quick burst. All right, after that, Cloud is basically just going ham on the damage right here. All right, I will heal Barret's fog. And Barret, in the meantime, is going to use energization to break their, uh, their physical attacks. All right, here we go. There we go. We're just going to block this first hit right here. Oh, we got so close to killing that first guy right there. All right, there you have it. All right, I'm just going to wait a little bit, pop this Cura. We are going to finish off that guy right there. The moment that guy goes down, I'm going to Fire Breach and Quick Burst. Cloud's going to get this guy down to around half health. All right, so maybe one more hit after that. Once I switch over, I'm going to switch to this guy over here. We're going to Fire Breach him, Quick Burst him down. All right, we're going to Spiritual Harmony on Aerith. And Cloud is going to get this guy down low. And we should, at this point in time, be getting pretty close to getting our summons up. It doesn't look like we might actually not need it here with the big physical defense break from Barret. All right. I'll drop a Kiraga here. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're really going to need it going into this. So I'm just going to jump over to Barret, toss some Fyras, and call it a day. But essentially, guys, if you're going into this, what I, my strategy was there is they're about to come into a sigil break. And so, like, before I had the triple, the high physical defense break, I wasn't doing as much damage, right? But essentially, you kill the middle guy, take the other two guys on the side down to around 50%. By the time the sigil break is about three quarters of the way through, you should pop the Crimson Flare and Ifrit. Just open up with the Crimson Flare and Ifrit, and that fight will be done. All right, so that is floor 91, basically in a nutshell for you guys to take out. Now I'm going to go into floor 92, which I think might be the easiest of the three. It is a wind-focused stage. We will be fighting the Zoo Kabuda. All right, Re weakness to wind, resistant to earth, immunities, magic, defense down. So physical is going to be effective, as it says right here. Physical attacks are effective. Magic attacks are effective for destroying sigils. So we will be bringing magic sigil breaks. All right, other than that, this one's pretty straightforward. You're just going to be imperiling him. We're going to use Aerith's Flora Wand. So let me switch over to our second team of the day. All right, I will be running Sephiroth, Tifa as our healer, right? Which we're seeing less and less of these days. And Aerith over here as a wind DPS, which also we're seeing less and less of. I feel like they block Aerith from doing damage as a wind DPS, which is a little bit of a shame, not going to lie. All right, so to quickly go through this right here, for our Sigil Breaks, we're running Magic Sigil on every character. Circle is going to be the Sigil of the Day. So Circle on Sephiroth, Circle on Tifa, Circle on Aerith. All right. 
Other than that, the Materia is not super important. I have a single Cura on Tifa, uh, physical attack stat sticks on Sephiroth, magic attack stat sticks on Aerith. All right, now as for the actual setups on the front end, we have Dark Harbinger, Heliacal Rising, Dark Heavens, and Theatrical Sword here for Sephiroth. Tifa will be running her healing costume, Somersault, Guide Gloves, and the Lifeguard Wraps for the AoE heal. Aerith will be running the Prism Dress, Healing Wind, Prism Rod, and the Floral Rod right here. Although, just toss in your best sub Wind DPS, whether that's Yuffie or Zack or whatever you have, it's going to be fine in this fight. All right, the sigils are important here. We are going to break the sigils. Let me show you really quick the back end of this setup for the team. Sephiroth here, 127k power, 9.8k HP, 4.9k physical attack. He's got 117 physical defense, 123 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here for you guys to check out. And his sub weapons are the Stream Saber, OB9, the looks like the Falchion, yep, at OB10, and the Ultimatic here at OB9. Tifa will be sitting at 112k power, 13k HP. Her attacks are not really super important, but physical attack 3.4k, physical defense 156, magic defense 123, and healing 2.5. All right, her R abilities are as shown here for you guys to check out. All right, and her sub weapons are going to be the Feather Scatter, the Guard Stick, and the Hellhouse Collar for the physical defense in the fight. Last but not least, we have Aerith Gainsboro, 137k power, 15.5k HP, 3.8k magic attack, 135 physical defense, 108 magic defense, and her R abilities are as shown here for you guys to see as well. All right, last but not least, her sub weapons will include the Umbrella, the, uh, what is this called? The Hellhouse Cannon, and Zack's Arc Sword right here for a little bit of magic attack. All right. So other than that, that is going to conclude the team setup for glowing into floor 92. Let's get into it. I'm going to show you guys basically the quickest, easiest way to get through this floor. This one's the least kind of, you know, mechanic dependent. This one's super easy. You're basically just going in, you're breaking the physical defense, you're imperiling with the floral rod. Um, you're using theatrical sword with Sephiroth and healing with Tifa. All right, so here we go. I'm going to wait just a little bit so that this lasts longer. Jump over to Sephiroth. Wait till the very end to get the most out of the buff. All right, and then after that, we're just basically going ham on the damage here. All right, Tifa can do a little bit of damage here and there. He is going to drop his Sigil Break on us here in a second. All right, so here comes his Great Gale. I'm just going to sit on Tifa here until this goes up all right we will block it then i can double heal all right there we go i don't even know if i'll need a double heal to be honest i'll toss one more all right so here comes the sigil break right here guys it's not going to be too bad as long as you brought magic sigil sigils you won't have to worry about anything all right there we go almost done i'll let tifa and sephiroth break it all right, we're gonna Floral Flare. And we're just gonna go straight into the rest of the damage here, guys. All right, there we go. And that should be Floor 92. If you guys don't have as strong of OB weapons for these, honestly, as long as you are preparing for the mechanics that you need going into these fights, they are built to be handled by by weaker OB weapons. So as long as you understand what you need going into it, and that's what more of these guides are for, is just to show you guys kind of a sneak peek and an overall breakdown walkthrough of the floor itself so that you guys can go in there, build your teams as best as you can, and take down these floors as easy as possible. All right, that being said, that takes us to our final floor of the day. That's gonna be floor 93. Now this one I would say is the hardest of the three. This boss right here is a real piece of work. We all know him, the Yornish Strike, all right? Sigil Break is going to be X, Weakness is Ice. Immunities, Poison, Darkness, Fatigue, so defense breaks are open, offensive breaks are open, right? He does inflict Poison with Poison Sting and Defense Down along with Fatigue with Royal Wedding. 
all right so fatigue can be annoying especially if you're using physical attack characters all right so i'm going to switch over to the team of the day for floor 93 all right now i just want to make sure that we have a fatigue for everyone i don't have one for barrett and so i or i mean matt my bad so I'm going to jump over to Cloud, and I'm going to slot a Healing Asuna Fatigue just in case on him. All right, now there's so many freaking Fatigues that I forget what they look like, but I think it might be not any of those. It's this one. All right, so let's just check, make sure we get one with a decent physical attack. Um, let me switch this over to sort by physical attack. All right, let's go down. I did beat this the first time without a, a uh, Fatigue Asuna, but it is what it is. All right, it looks like that's the strongest one I have. So I'm just going to put that on Cloud just in case. It is definitely helpful to have. But essentially, this boss fight, um, we're going to take out the adds first. I'm going to Ice Breach with Matt, right? So let's take a look at the Materia first. The only Materias that are important here are the X Sigils, one on each character. All right, it's good. I'm bringing Zach here because he has an X Sigil boost on his main hand weapon here. All right, because the Sigil break can be a little bit tough to break, the boss will be damaging you during the Sigil phase, and he can do a decent amount of single target damage. So if you can bring one, if not two, X Sigil break weapons, it's definitely going to help you during that phase for staying alive. Other than that, I have a Healing Asuna Poison on one of my characters. It's going to be Zach here. All right, I have an Ice Breach on Matt since. Zack's weapon will only go to mid on the first cast unless someone hits it with an Ice Breach first. So Matt, and then followed by Zack for the Imperils. All right, we have the Healing Asuna Fatigue on Cloud right here. And then other than that, everything else are just stat sticks. For the front end builds, we have Apocalypse Limit Break. We have the HP Buff Debuff Costume on Zack. We have the, what is this called again? The Pressure Ridge, all right, for the Imperil and a little bit of damage. I have the Cutlass here for the physical defense break as well. So Zach is doing full-on breaking job in this fight. Matt is going to have his Cure Voucher healing costume, Gigantic Shield, Centipede in the main hand, and the SP Rapier next G for the single target heal since the boss's like main kind of sickle attack is always single target and always does a lot of damage. It's nice to have a strong single target heal. All right. Now, last but not least, we have Cloud. He is running his Limit Break Draw costume, Limit Break Draw weapon. Blavin is here at OB6, but more or less just slot whatever strongest ice character that you have. Pop in Shiva as well. All right. And then if we take a quick look at the back end here, Zach Bear, 100k power, 11.7k HP, 4.4k physical attack, 136 physical defense. The boss will be doing all physical attacks. All right. His R abilities are going to be shown here. HP, physical attack basically focusing a lot of buff debuff extension for Zack since he's our main breaker and imperiler. All right, his sub weapons will be the Wind Slash right here. All right, we have the Arctic Star and uh, the Tifa's Amaron's Claws, mostly just for HP, a little bit of physical ability potency. Just slot whatever you can on him to get a little bit more physical attack. We have Matt over here, 95k power, 11.5k HP. His attacks are not as important. 148 physical defense, 3.4k healing. We look at his back end, healing is up at level 10, buff debuff extension at level 5, those are the important ones. We have guard stick, syringe rapier, and the hellhouse caller in his back end. All right. And last but not least, we have cloud over here, 171k power, 12.3k HP, 5.5k physical attack, 118 physical defense. His R ability is focusing physical attack, attack, ice potency, physical ability potency, and a little bit of physical attack to all allies, with sub weapons being the bald eagle, the guide gloves, and the automatic right here. All right, guys, so that being said, that is going to conclude the team build for this fight. Let's just get into it. This will be the last one of the day. At the very beginning of this fight, I'm just going to focus on imperiling and breaking the adds and taking them down as fast as possible. All right, so first things first. We're going to jump over to the right one. I'm going to pop an Ice Breach right here. Zach is going to pop a Freezing Cleave. All right. And Cloud should be able to hopefully take this thing down as fast as possible. All right. So we didn't quite get it right there. All right. So we're going to knock it down with Cloud. Jump back over to Matt, who will focus that one. Zach will get the double uh, Imperil right here. 
and I'm going to start healing with Matt to get our physical defense up in preparation for the boss who's about to start doing some damage, all right? So there comes his ready to pounce. All right, so I'm just gonna sit over here on Matt and wait for this strike to hit. I can counter this hit since he's only focusing Cloud with our offhand weapon on Matt right here. All right, so I can first aid Cloud. All right, we're gonna freezing cleave, get that in peril to high. I'm gonna use recovery circle, get our physical defense buff all the way up to high as well. I'll do a fierce charge slash on Cloud. Get the physical attack up and the physical defense break. Zack will use the Cutlass to take that physical defense break to high. All right. And from here on out, we're basically just surviving, doing as much damage as we can, keeping up our breaks, and doing as much yeah, damage as we can. All right. So here we go. There's the Royal Rebbing. All right. So there is the uh, Sigil Break right there. All right, here we go. Let me just make sure that, yep, he is good right there. Zack is the one with the sigil boost. As you guys can see, boss does some decent damage, right? So it's nice to have that sigil break right there. All right, there we go. We'll switch over to destructive swipe. All right, I'll use a fierce charge slash, jump back over to Matt, hit that recovery circle, get everyone's HP back up to full. All right. Now that we are getting into our limit breaks right here, we should be pretty close to uh, getting everything to cake this guy down once and for all. All right, we do have a little bit of a poison right here. I'm just gonna keep everyone buffed up. I think I'm gonna do one more destructive swipe and then drop the limit breaks. One more hit with Cloud here. All right, there we go. Let's drop the limit breaks and see if Shiva can take it out. If not, we'll be pretty damn close to the end. But yeah, this boss right here has always been a pain ever since the beginning of Ever Crisis. All right, poison, fatigue, strong single target damage. It's just, it's got a lot. All right, so there goes Shiva. Hopefully this will take out the Yorna Strike. Leaves it on a sliver of health right here. All right. We still have Matt's Gigantic Shield going up, so we are prepared for whatever it has to throw at us. I'm just going to switch to Matt. I'll drop some Ice Breaches. Let's try and kill him with Ice Breach. Oh, so close. I'm going to still go to try and kill him with Ice Breach right here. Come on. Let's freaking go. All right, so that is going to be floor 93. I will be doing a guide for floors 94 and 95 together, since those both feature Wind Weak enemies. But essentially, that is going to be the gist of floors 91, 92, 93. If you guys have any questions, if you can't work with high or higher OB weapons, such as the ones I'm using in these fights, don't be shy. Definitely drop a comment. I've helped out hundreds of people over the almost year that Ever Crisis has been out to clear different guides and bosses, etc. So I'm happy to help you guys out as well. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content. And if you guys are interested in joining a community of players that love this game, that are interested in helping you build groups to run co-op fights, clear crash co-op fights, we have a Discord called the Curseborn Discord. We have 13 guilds in our Discord, all of which were in the top 100 in the last ranking. So if you're looking for an awesome community to join, the link to join our Discord is in the description of all my videos. We hope to see you guys there. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.